So hi guys, so obviously welcome to obviously episode 11, Stoomcast. Uh, tonight we're joined by Andy Callahan, or Professor Andy Callahan. So Andy Callahan's a, a black belt under Marcus Nardini. Um, he was Ayr's first black belt. Um, Andy, as well as being obviously doing jiu-jitsu, I mean Andy's uh, quite a successful physio uh, in regards to he's been able to kind of travel with Paul Craig, um, obviously be Paul Craig's main physio, I think he went down to Australia, um, uh, obviously down there, uh, Andy as well as doing the physio stuff and training as himself under Marcos, obviously he's got Callahan's Jiu Jitsu as well, um, and Callahan's Jiu Jitsu, I mean anybody that sees these guys at competitions, these guys are, uh, one, they're always ready for a fight, um, they're always up for a fight and Again, very, very successful guys. I mean, from the younger guys up to the older guys, um, all been very, very successful. So, obviously, training well under Andy. Uh, so, Andy, listen, thanks very much for obviously taking the time no to speak to me tonight. Um, good evening. How's everything going with you? Things are good. Thank you very much. Nice thanks very much. One. Nice one. So, as I say, we're just going to have a chat, uh, Andy, about obviously your journey, what got you into jujitsu and stuff like that. So, Obviously, first things first, Ed. So, when did the jiu-jitsu journey start for yourself? Okay, so I've been doing martial arts for quite a long time due to the fact that I'm probably quite old. <laughs> and when I started, I started doing martial arts in Glasgow with the Cows Brothers years ago and they were doing a wee bit of grappling, but it wasn't very good at that time. Yeah. And I'm going back oof, over 20, 25 years probably. Yeah, they had and the then, gym. That was at the top of the town, yeah. That's, yeah, it was, well, I think they finished in Robertson Street in Glasgow, I think, when I last came in them, which will be years ago. I don't know where they are now, I haven't seen them for years. Yeah. And then through them, I trained with a guy, we went down to Northampton to a gym called Rough and Ready, mm -hmm. um, who was run by a guy called Morris Young, and he was a big yeah, K1 fighter. Yeah. And at that time, there was a guy, um, Ewan Campbell, was a Scottish guy, training down there. And Mark McFan, who was from the States, who introduced us to grappling. Mm -hmm. So he was the first grappling coach that I had. Yeah. And at that time, they were training with the Gracies because the Gracies weren't as big as what they are now, but they were still doing doing grappling. Yeah. And through him, I met a guy, Eric Paulson, and then and Rick Young. Yeah. So that then opened the doors to other people coming in for seminars and and grappling. And then once uh, we were doing MMA at that time, but it was all um, no gi, so mm -hmm. it was all just, as my mates called it, man coiling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and that's how it started. Just started off just learning. And then all the boys that were doing it at that time were quite a close knit of guys. It were only it was only so many folk doing that in, in mm -hmm. Scotland at that time. So, Paul and Gary, Will, uh, McCracken, uh, Joke, Andy Austin, and the other, everybody was training together more or less at times that they could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and. So I used to drive down south and then go down to, uh, down to England quite a lot of times to try and get my training down there because it was hard to find anyone up here to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, and then as you'll see in the last ten to fifteen years, it's grown with yeah. um, with the, the effects it's had in the UFC and how it's developed and grown through that time. And mm -hmm. and I've just kind of bobbed along mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. it just in the sidelines, and it's been good. And then obviously, um, so I got my blue belt from so when I got into jiu jitsu, I was doing. So I was doing, always doing grappling, mm -hmm. and then I went to judo because it was the closest thing I could find yeah. um, to jiu-jitsu, which was great. So I did that with the boys in Kamarnock at Kamarnock Judo Club, they were absolutely brilliant. And then we um, went to seminars, um, I got my blue belt from Hoist Gracie years ago, mm -hmm. um, and then developed as a blue belt for probably about maybe six or seven years. Yeah. maybe longer and then met Marcus so mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately when we met Marcus we grabbed him and told him he was our coach whether he probably didn't want <laughs> to be the coach at that time yeah yeah as he'll probably agree and then just and then we trained in all as if you've listened to Joke's podcast yeah in all types of conditions yeah uh, we never had we never had the luxury of 40 mil mats air conditioned <laughs> or conditioned we had freezing cold wet stinky horrible 20 mil mats or carpets to train on. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and all we did was grab each other and try and do our damnedest to each other every every time we met, and it was uh, quite painful. But we were young enough to be able to recover. So. Yeah, yeah. So, 
And then when we met Marcus, we realised that we've been grappling for years until we were quite good. And fairness, uh, a lot of us were quite handy. Yeah. What, what we thought. And then when he actually did some real jiu-jitsu and stuff that continues to on us, we realised that we were maybe not at the level we probably should have been and we deserved to be where we were. Yeah. And then we, we just the process of learning started. Yeah, but, I mean, that's a funny thing. I mean, when you obviously know, as you know, you know, be a black belt. Uh, yeah. And it, it kind of opens your eyes, especially when you're a blue belt, purple belt, yeah. white belt, or whatever you are, it opens your eyes to um, a whole other ball game. Do you know what I mean? Like, anytime I roll with Marcos, you're like, right, you think you've got him, you've never got him at all. Do you know what I mean? He yeah, wants right. you to think that. So. He's a he's a very hard roller, and equally so are other black belts. So when you travel the world, so everywhere I everywhere I go on holiday, I, I book a I go somewhere. Yeah. So I just go right, I Google somewhere before I go, and if I can go and find somewhere to train, I disappear for a couple of days. Yeah. And in the level of people you meet around the world, and, they, and I would have to say that in relation to sports and meeting people through Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it's probably the most open friendless environment that you can go into that's yeah. quite safe uh, and you, then you realise what level you're at because the level of black belt is quite a, a different level especially yeah. years and years ago because as you probably unless you've been doing it for long black belts didn't exist I mean purple belts and brown belts didn't exist mm -hmm. then to meet a to meet a fellow blue belt was, was similar, similar to, but nowadays Blue belts are everywhere. Yeah. Purple belts are more. But these people didn't. Ten years ago or twelve years ago, there wasn't. But this, there wasn't. Even in, you know, when we're in Britain, yeah. when in Scotland, there wasn't any. So you, you you have to have looked. You know, the growth market that's that is given to all the clubs, mm -hmm. and it's great. And everybody's different, and that's the good thing about it. Everybody has their own game, and yeah, and it's great. Yeah. I mean, you were, you were certainly one. I mean, obviously, when I spoke the joke and all that joke was saying, that obviously, you guys, especially in Ayrshire, um, you guys were pretty much the old school, the OGs of Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Um, and well, Ayrshire, we, I think we still we, I think we are the old school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we're probably look at it as well, the way our knuckles drag along the pavement. Yeah. So, and we can hardly talk, although I'm probably a more literate than joke. Yeah, yeah. Another much. Bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no. We, we are old school, but we, we understand the things that we learned that we are self-taught. Yeah. We were just trying positions and trying different things. We were taught not by technique, by tri trial and error. So yeah. Yeah. Um, once your head's basically coming off the end of your shoulders, you think, well, maybe we should stop this. Or when you start losing teeth, <laughs> sure, that doesn't work either. Or, yeah. well, that didn't sound too good. Why is your arm in that position? Or, well, maybe try. So we were just, whereas now, because of the coaching and development of Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu itself, and its development, you can see processes and teaching and structure within things which we didn't do years ago. Mm -hmm. And then with the coaches that I've had, you know, they all implement certain styles of, of teaching, mm -hmm. and then I'll say that rubs on yourself. So yeah, as yeah. as you know, as, as we go through our, our journey of learning. Yeah. I so mean, you no, it's, you certainly see that. I mean, as I say there. Uh, um, obviously, some of your guys that are coming out of Callahan's Jiu Jitsu, I mean, as I said, you see these guys at competitions. Um, as I said, one, they've obviously got that similar mindset. I mean, obviously, speaking to you, speaking to like Joke and uh, Hugh and all that, I mean, it's that mentality where look, we're going in here for a fight. Do you know what I mean? So, and that's what your guys, they're always ready. They're always ready. They always come ready. And as I said, they, they do very well. I mean, one of my kind of good friends, Stuart Shankland. Um, yeah. Obviously, I trained with him when he was uh, when he started off as a white belt. He come in and trained at Gracie Baja, and obviously I first met him then. And to see his progression, certainly when he left GB to come to you, um, yeah. and to see where he is now, just unbelievable yeah. to see. And again, I don't know if I'm fully responsible for that. I'm sure he's got other coaches <laughs> that probably help him more than me. But yeah. I just go in and have a good laugh. I'm give him a very bit of cheek, and then say like. But I don't. We have a good laugh, and that's the only thing I would say about us. We yeah. we don't take things too seriously, so we just uh, we are a bit of a cheeky club. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and we just go and the guys try their best, and they're all we all develop at different levels, and we all you know, and we all have different strengths. So it's just trying to get the best out of however they they're doing. But yeah. the good thing is they I, I have an open policy. I, I invite my guys to train in all clubs. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't have. The politics that you just do with me, my, my the guys that go 
into into me will go to a variety of clubs at any time, yeah. and 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 they and they get welcomed, and it's great, especially if they're all local. They go to different guys in Ayrshire, which is brilliant. Mm-hmm. So they get they get the influence of different coaches. Yeah, because I can, I'm not a one stop all. Do you know what I mean? I, there's only so many things I can do and teach, mm-hmm. and my, and the physical things that I can do. The younger guys are far better they can you know go straight into inversion whereas I would probably have to reattach my spine to get to get back into that position so yeah yeah I would um so they they go and they can learn and put and then they bring it back and then they share that and that's a good thing so mm-hmm. and we're a small club and we're not not a huge club but we um but they've done quite well I'm very proud of of mm-hmm. uh, all of them yeah so I mean they've done they've done well I didn't really plan to start the club I was more or less told to start it mm-hmm. and it's a uh, growing arms and legs since I've uh, since I've, I've started, I mean, you Mackay, um, who basically <coughs> operates it from the background far better than, than I do because I just turn up. Yeah. Um, he, he does a lot, and, and Rob, mm-hmm. and, I've, and there's our guy, John Murphy, but he, um, he doesn't do too much. He just turns up whenever he wants. Yeah. I thought I'd give him a mention because yeah, I haven't seen him for ages. <laughs> and, uh, but if you ever come across the guy, it'd be really, really nice. You know, If you ever send him back down to where he, yeah. where he actually started learning his jiu-jitsu, that'd be smashing. Well, is he not, he's, not, uh, he's not injured at the moment. Got... Oh, he's play, he plays these games. You know, so he just plays these games. I don't know. He just, he can only, I think he can only do a week of jiu-jitsu. But he is in his 50s, so I've got to give him that. He is an right. uh, old school. Yeah, yeah. So... Nah, but, um, but, uh, no. I've met John a few times. I think I've only had the, the chance to to thank Rob William once. Um, but big, uh, really, really uh, big, nice guy, and his son is. I well. know it's a lovely guy. No, it's a lovely guy. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, Michael. It will be brilliant. Yeah. So it will be. He's come on. So Michael started with us as a just a boy who came in because his dad wanted to bring him along. Yeah. And to look at what he can do now in comparison to what is unbelievable. There, that, that's a. That, you know, that's work in progress, and it just yeah. shows you what you can achieve if you put a wee bit of effort into it, a yeah. bit of focus. Yeah. Uh, he's done very well. Nah, Michael's so he has. definitely one to watch for the future. Uh, yeah, no, he will be. And you've got to, and he's grown and developed, and he has grown, you know, and, and the things he can do now that he couldn't do two years ago or even six months ago is just so. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really, really good to see. And that's progress in, in the sport, and that's what you want to see people having, the, you know, having in the future, you know, and they can, he can pass it on to other. Tell other people, which is good. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then what about you? Obviously, as I say, you've you've hooked up with Marcos. Um, that would have been what two thousand and um, <sighs> tail end of two thousand. Oh, I think it was about two thousand eight. So it must be ten years ago because Marcus yeah. had just Marcus hadn't long moved. Yeah, yeah. Um, he hadn't. He'd only just arrived, mm-hmm. and um, Adam Carson. Um, it phoned me up says there's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and beast. I didn't believe him. And I'm thinking, no, there isn't. He goes, no, there is Andy. I said, Adam, don't. And then, then it turns out it was, and it was Marcus. So we, what I did is I used to pick him up and then grab him down to here. And then we introduced him to the rest of the guys. And then we all started training together. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was, and it was just, and it was just doing privates and training every week and just putting hard do you know what I mean? Just hard work. It was horrendous. Mm-hmm. And I could have given Jiu Jitsu up a million times. I used to drive back down the road and go and I'm not going back. I've given that up. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's just, you just have to deal with it because sometimes, as everybody will tell you, you can be really good and you can do things and then you can go through, I mean, you could be months. Yeah, it's horrendous. Yeah, yeah. And you get injuries as you do things because you, you are, you'll be very, very lucky if you can do five years of Jiu Jitsu and not get injured. Yeah, yeah. We all get injured. It's, it's because of, you're in contact, you don't know what's going to happen, you, and accidents happen because it's a contact sport, basically, so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, so, yeah, so, progressed with him, and then, so that was me, got uh, blue, I got my, then got my purple from Marcus, then brown, and then eventually got my, my black, which yeah. I was very proud of, it was a, a very, a very good day, yeah. I never thought I would ever get there, but I did, I did. What was the emotion, so, um, obviously you got your black belt, because uh, obviously we all know that with every belt comes emotion um, uh, I remember obviously when I got my boy belt I was like wow I couldn't believe it um, so obviously getting a black belt I mean being Ayers first black belt um, yeah I think um, uh, I think it was I don't know I was a bit numb I didn't actually expect I went down Joke said um, you coming up here today and it was, it was it was quite a busy hall and I said oh, God, he goes you, know, you need to come you need to meet me and pick me up or something and I get in the car and then we're standing down and 
and uh, and Marcus called me and said, "Here, yeah, there you go." And I couldn't, Matt, and honestly, I couldn't. I didn't know what to say at the time. I was a wee bit mortified, and yeah. and uh, and you never think. And I probably still now I'm not overly comfortable wearing the belt because you have, you know, you've you've driven to try and get there, and then you've been given this, and then you think you're a standard that you're not really. You're not. Uh, you're still. I think my best belt was brown because. I probably preferred being a brown belt than a black belt, yeah. and I probably felt I would wear that belt more comfortable than a black. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it was, um, but that's just, yeah, it was a, it was, it was quite a surprise. Yeah, I don't know if I fully deserved it, but I've got it anyway, so I'll probably just keep it now. But I, uh, <laughs> no, I just, uh, yeah, no, it's good. And the other guys are all with it. Yeah. At similar levels are good, yeah. like John Nick and stuff like that. You know, it's just so it was good. It was good. Aye. I mean, anybody I speak to, I mean, they've always got, anybody I speak to has got good words to say about you. Never, I I, again, and I hear this a lot from, obviously, Marcus's guys, um, that nobody's got a bad word to say about any of them. Um, yeah. And it's the same with you. I mean, obviously, everybody, when they talk about Roland, they always talk about, well, the the, the, the ones from the older school, the older generation. Yeah. <laughs> that's never roles. good. That's never good. <laughs> But they say these are the toughest roles. I mean, like say you yourself, Joe, Hugh, even when John comes over. Um, yeah, John's um, great. Um, all you guys are <laughs> very, very tough roles. You guys are tougher roles than um, like some of the younger guys that are coming up. I think so, it's a, just a different game. They're, they're, the, the older guys are tighter and harder. We probably don't give as much. We put a wee bit more pressure on. Yeah. I mean, John Nick's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I think he's, he's brilliant. And John... Joe, what John's done in martial arts over the years is incredible as well. He's had a fantastic journey. He's, he's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Joke's just, just a wee tight. <laughs> but I be swear I'm not going to do a joke, but a wee barrel, but he's, he's really tight. And, it, yeah. and it, so if, if I, my main aim is just not to get swept, and, and, if, and it's the hardest thing in the world. Joke yeah. has probably the best game for going under you than anybody else. Yeah. In the, but he's a master at it. Hmm. What he can do. Um, when he's underneath you and to get underneath is incredible. Yeah, yeah. It's just a skill that's so I mean I could spend weeks learning that I would I would never, never, never be able to catch. And if I go there that's my main aim is just not to get caught for a sweep. Yeah. Yeah. Um which is you know, bloody impossible but but it's good to you know, it teaches in they're just tighter, they, they probably don't give as much mm-hmm. because they know what whereas the younger guys are probably more open and more mobile and, and have more opportunity to see things that yeah. we probably don't get to see, but yeah, yeah. So and we don't give them anything. And the benefit of being a black belt is you can stop at any time. Say, hold on a second, I'll show you this just before you tap <laughs> out. So that's my that's my main aim of having a black belt. That's that's the most important thing. I go, oh, no, hold on a second, just before I go unconscious. I never had that there, yeah. liar. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so, that. so you that's, put, you've put your secret out there. So yeah, that's why people you. think, well, that guy Andy Callan is a really nice guy. I think, you know, it's just because I was just because I was dribbling in the mat. I think, you know, right. uh, <laughs> no, right. just the hamsters all, unfortunately. And then, did you did you do a speech for your black belt? Were you? I just got, yeah, I did a, my speeches, yeah, I stood and probably spoke for about 30 seconds and dribbled because I wasn't entirely sure of what, what was uh, happening, yeah. but no, I did, and, uh, and it was a busy hall, and, and uh, it was great to see uh, Marcus's mob uh, all there doing things, it was great, I mean, that's a, a club that's growing, which is started from nothing, I mean, he had no students when I rolled him, as in zero, it was yeah. me, him, it was Joe, I think at the beginning it was Adam, mm-hmm. um, and then he just started, started a wee bit and come on, I can grow. And, but to go, and I always said to him, look, you've got the opportunity here to do things and it's great to see what he's done. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It's really, really good. Yeah. And obviously he's a really nice guy, I have to say that. And unfortunately he's a really good black belt. But yeah. it'd be good if he wasn't as good as what he was. <laughs> and life would be a lot easier for some of us. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, nah, yes, yeah, no, I mean, he, so, he was the same when we came over from GB. I mean, I, I'd known Marcos for, what's that, I think, 2015, I met him down at the British. Um, obviously, at that time, I was the only GB guy down, and he was the only MNBJJ guy down, so um, so we kind of got chatting away. Um, and he'd always said, obviously, Look, come in, anytime you want to come and train, come on over, come on and train, but obviously, GB politics, 
um, or GB Glasgow Politics didn't allow us to go and cross train at different gyms. Um, and so I always said, look, no, nah, it'll never happen, it'll never happen. And then obviously when, when we did leave GB, he was the first person that I contacted because, again, I could have went to the grip house, could have, could have went anywhere else, but for me, yeah. do you know I mean? Because I'd met him, and there's something about being the only Brazilian black belt um, yeah, in Scotland. So um, you're going to learn directly from a source. And as I say, when moving over, um, yeah, I mean, as I say, he's a fantastic guy. I've been fortunate I've been able to go away to different competitions with him, Portugal, down in London and all that. And, yeah, no, he's very chilled out. He's really nice. He's a nice, he's a lovely guy. Yeah. So, I mean, most of the guys in Jiu Jitsu are, are lovely. I don't. No, they're all good. The guys up at the grip are great. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and do you know I mean all the guys that I meet? I don't do politics. That's the only one thing I don't. I have a very open policy, and I just think you can go wherever you want, train wherever you want. You can go to any clubs, yeah. and I think if people can get the opportunity to learn from other people, and it's great. Mm -hmm. And I and I don't think anybody's got a right to tell an individual that's that's wanting to learn from themselves that they can't go somewhere else and train. That's just my my, my personal thoughts. Yeah, yeah. And um, because it's the way I've done it. When we were training ourselves. When we were younger, we had to go like to Europe, to the States, to to all over the country to try and get somebody to train with, to try and mould ourselves. So we should be able to, yeah. you know, pass that information on and, and get people to do the same. Understand this politics when you're, you're competing against each other. Mm -hmm. But up mm -hmm. and around that, you know, it's, it's, I don't really have yeah. that major issues. But no, no, Mark is a lovely guy. I mean, and, and, and he's, you know, he's done well. Look at the people he's got. Do you know what I mean, they've got. You've got Paul and uh, Brian, mm -hmm. uh, Little and Large, out at, um, at Cobridge, do you know what I mean? That's so, cool, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and they're both, I mean, they're brand new as well, they're great, good, yeah. to, good to train with and good to roll, so you've got, you've got right, good, he's got a good wee mix and a good wee family of people yeah. that are yeah. there to, to, to support the, the, the MB, NMBJ, you know, mm -hmm. background, and yeah. no, it's good. Yeah, nah, he's got a good, he's got <coughs> definitely a good, a good, a, as you said, a good bunch of people around him. Um, and then, obviously, you being a physio as well, I mean, you obviously get the chance to be the physio for Paul Craig. Um, well, I did. Well, it wasn't actually as a physio. I was supposed to be his grappling coach. Right, okay. I think just because I was over, but I, I think the way that the marketing went, I mm -hmm. probably marketed physio more because I thought I'd get more out of it. Yeah. But I was there because I was just hoping, God, I hope he doesn't get injured because I'll just screw the whole thing up. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I've trained him a few times and he's great. So yeah, um, I think they just so I went over and I was and I got asked to go and to get an opportunity like that because obviously being doing MMA and trying to do stuff when we were younger and, and mm -hmm. being involved in that and having the opportunity to do that yeah. was great. Yeah. Um. So it was a great experience and it was good, but it, from the background of them, it's actually harder than you probably think, and people don't appreciate how hard it is for the fighters yeah. leading up to the fight to go and do what they do and then go in and fight that, that, that was probably the hardest thing and the coaches in the background keeping him focused yeah. you know and doing things it, it, it's not as easy or as, certainly not glamorous I wouldn't say it was glamorous it's hard work Yeah, yeah. and you have to respect each and every single one of them for what they do mm -hmm. because on fight day you basically you're just cancelled into a wee room Right, you're out, and it, it, literally, it's just been thrown into a pit. Right, yeah. you're fighting both, and as soon as you, and then you're back into your wee room. It's yeah, it's um, and the emotions before and after is hard. Mm -hmm. That was a that was a hard traveling thing, you know, to go over there and do that. But it was a great experience. I mean, you know, Paul and that they're great. They're good, to nice, relaxed, great company. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you know it was good? So I thoroughly enjoyed. I thoroughly enjoyed the experience, and I thank them greatly for it. Yeah. Um, but I was hoping that he didn't get injured and I didn't need to use my physio skills because that would have been a bloody nightmare. <laughs> right, right. So, so I mean, uh, especially there because I was there he's, he, for the, to do his jets and his grappling thing. Yeah. If there's anybody going to injure me, it would have been me. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, would, that wouldn't have been good. Yeah. Um, but as it worked out, the result of the fight um, wasn't the best. Mm -hmm. And however, he, he, what he did in his lead up in relation to what he did is, is remarkable. And he's off the, after his last fight, yeah, yeah. Um, he he did really well as well, which is great. It's great to see him and, and nice guys. Yeah, good guys, a good sense of humour as well, which is great. Yeah, I mean yeah. Paul. I mean, I first met Paul was um, in fact it wasn't even me that met him. It was my son because he did the uh, is it Skill Force? I think he does the 
Um, yeah. Flibs, he goes around the school, so he went to... Yeah, he does, that's right. Yeah, he went to one of my son's school, um, and obviously got chatting to my son, uh, because he came in and my son knew straight away who he was, and he was the only person in the school, uh, in the class, that knew who he was, do you know what I mean? So, so he got chatting away at my son, and my son at the time was a white belt, he was only, what, 16 or something at the time, but he was one of these white belts where... He wants to roll with everybody. <laughs> so he was yeah, like, just... and he was saying to Paul, he says, Oh, when are you coming back? And Paul's like, Yeah, yeah, I'm coming back on whatever day it was. And my son's like, I'll bring my gear in. You can bring yours in. And Paul's like, No, no, your your school will know what that happened, do you know what I mean? So, um, no, he's, but then, yeah, he's, got, he's got a good sense of humor, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... But he did he had a lot of time for the kids and all that. He's great, he's got, you know, honestly he's He's got, he's got a lot of time for lots of people. He's a great, it's a great, it's yeah. great guy. It's mean, funny. Yeah. And yeah. you know, working hard and so it's Brian. Brian, you know, developing, you know, good good fighters out of the camp and things like yeah. that. And he's, yeah. you know, it's just it's good, good coach. And again, he's, he's another black belt. You know, it's another Scottish black belt that's been given his black belt by Marcus. You know, and yeah. and, and well deserved. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? To so it's if I was fighting a guy who was six foot five every day, and I was I was under six foot, I'm not saying that Brian maybe is under six foot, but potentially he could be. Um, I think I would deserve a black belt as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Brian's so, been around. I know Brian's been around the game for a long time as well. Uh, yeah, no, he has. I has. He's been around for years and years. Yeah, and obviously he's had so, a, he's had a lot of success out of that gym. Obviously, a lot of good guys coming through. He's got. He's, um, got, uh, he's He's got a great, he's got a great setup. He's got a great ethos in the club. Mm-hmm. He's got a nice bunch of guys, and it's and it's pretty welcoming. Um, mm-hmm. When you go into when you go into the the club, it's got, and they're just nice, easy, dead easy guys to go on. Yeah, I'm yeah. quite cheeky, so it's, it probably helps me a bit. But <laughs> I was, I'm not, uh, I've not been thrown out anywhere yet, yeah, so yeah, you no, know, that's saying good. Oh, and I've not, and I've not had to cheat any of them, which is even better. So right, right. They, can, they can still think I'm a half decent <laughs> physio because I haven't had to utilise any of my skills. Yeah, yeah. So then, yeah. Obviously the physio as well. I mean, you've got because uh, I know a lot of guys, or, uh, quite a few guys, come down to you out of jujitsu from like uh, Kilmarnock and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so so you've got is it uh, Carl Hands? Is it health and therapy? Yeah. So I've got a physio clinic. Um, so I've I've got a a wee gym and a matted area in the back, so I just combine everything together. Yeah. So, and I've been doing physio for years. I've worked in um, loads of professional sports. I used to work with pro boxers and professional ice hockey and football. Yeah. Um, and then I've worked for myself for probably about 18 years now. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm lucky. I'm very lucky, touch wood, that I, I run a, a successful business as I want it to be in. Yeah. And we're busy. I've got a good wee team of staff, mm-hmm. and we yeah we've we've a good and, and all the staff do jets now. Right. Apart right. from uh, Beth, she doesn't. But we maybe try and get into that. But uh, yeah. But it all so it's, it's all it's all good. So yeah. I mean I'm lucky. So I'm very lucky to have the opportunity to love my work. Yeah. And yeah. do it for the hours I do it during the day. I'm very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely it's, 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 I've, I've been fortunate enough to not need your services yet. Yeah, no, you don't want to. <laughs> but listen, but, but it's, it'll come. But it's, no, hopefully not. It's good to when people come in and go, what happened to you? I've got my neck cranked. And you go, oh, I know that feeling. Yeah. This yeah. is what, yeah, just, it's, it's I mean, so it's, it, but it's one thing about it, it's just, you are, you will get injured. Um, yeah. And the older you get, your recovery time's a wee bit, and you have to manage yourself in order to get your, to get your return. That's the only thing that I would say. It's, it's um, if you manage yourself and you do some conditioning that, yeah. It definitely, definitely helps mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, with the uh, recuperation and the prevention. Yeah, I would say. You know, it's, it's, um, so I'm lucky that I have the understanding of physio and I can combine it with mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. the jets. So the only problem is that I know what happens if you apply things too much. Yeah. Um, so you can because you know the anatomy and the effects of what you're doing under these. So yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a good. But it probably helps me in my training in fairness because I can then go well. I know that joint doesn't go that way, so if I apply that pressure onto that, that might stop the person annoying me. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah so, no, it's good. So, you, that's a that's a big advantage for you then, obviously, the, the line of what you're in then, just uh, knowing exactly what to do to different I think things. it helps me when I teach, and see when I teach. Yeah. So, when I teach, uh, I probably didn't realise this until about a, maybe about a year ago, so when, I, so when I start teaching now, mm-hmm. I know which way the joint's going with anatomy so when I when I 
start working on movements and, and different people and their ability to move yeah. and how their hips move and how their joints move because everybody's different. Mm-hmm. You can apply different techniques and people with different with different uh, skill sets. Yeah. So people that, that are more mobile, who have got better hip range because Jiu-Jitsu bases a lot around hip movements. Yeah. Um, you can and do that and with people who are generally a wee bit heavier, bigger, but less mobile. Mm-hmm. Um, you can apply different things to 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 work with them, and and that's and that comes with not just learning jujitsu, mm-hmm. but understanding human movement, and yeah. that's that's probably an important aspect to have mm-hmm. that many other people probably don't have. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, so that's one one positive thing. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know how many other black belt physios there is, but I don't think I'll be any of them in Scotland. No, so I might be the no, so I might be the only one of them. Yeah, not that I can think of. Because as it's, so, it's, it's interesting to hear that because as it, for me, I've never heard. Um, well, yeah, yeah, I've, I've I've heard it, but I've never heard being able to obviously adapt it into your game, knowing the different parts of the body, how they move, and things like that. So yeah, it's um, just working range. So if we do that, we do that in teaching. Yeah. Um, and I apply that into the classes that we teach. It's probably the only serious thing I do. The rest of the time, I have a good laugh. <laughs> Um, so, but no, no, that's, that's about the probably only, the yeah. only serious thing that we do. Yeah. And then the Callahan Jiu Jitsu, obviously you did mention that earlier, so, um, yeah. when, did, when did that, when did that come about for you? So probably, so I got my black belt and I was treating Ewan, mm-hmm. and Ewan said, you should start a class. <clears throat> now we used to muck about in the back with another bunch of guys before that, he says, no, you should start a club. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm not starting a club. Yeah. And uh, and Kirsty and my partner said, Why don't you just start a club on a Tuesday night? Mm-hmm. The Tuesday night was the only night that I got off now. I worked really long hours. So she said, Just start a Tuesday night. So I started a Tuesday night. And then they were like, What other night can you do? I'm thinking, Oh, I'm doing another night. And then they said, Why do you do a Thursday? I said, Right. And then the next thing I know, somebody drew me a logo. Somebody had started the club name. Somebody had entered us <laughs> in a competition. Somebody had done this. Yeah. And now I've got a group of guys that turn up every week. And yeah. then and, uh, male, males and females can do. And do a class, and we're busy. You know, it's, yeah. it's really busy. It's mad. Yeah. Um. And the good thing is that they all. I don't. So the good thing is that I can get hope. They can go to other clubs, and when I'm not fully committed, if I'm away in a course or I'm doing something, mm-hmm. I can get like say Hugh down. Yeah. Um. Get David Pollock when he's um not injured. Yeah. Um. And. Uh, Sometimes the mats are too heavy for him to walk on. In fairness, he struggles to get across the mat. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But yeah. when he's fit enough to, to make it, he comes down and teaches. And then, you know, Joe comes down. And so it's great. It's just a really good mix of people. And then they can go up uh, up to Irvine uh, mm-hmm. and, and go in different places. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. To, up to Judo Ryans and stuff. So it's good. Yeah. You know, that's a good thing. You can bring in so many people that can come in and, and help, but they probably don't realise that they're, they're helping and, and that they do. Yeah. Um, we've got Jack Brown just now doing uh, no leg locks. Seminar, yeah. But every time, every time open his own look at it, brought, I, I'm like, it's not, no heel hooks, no, 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 and then I'm like, then they're all lying. So, <laughs> but he's doing a wee leg lock thing, which is great, and yeah. this is a wee addition for them to do. It is. I mean, that so, way, the leg lock game. I mean, over the last what maybe uh, years, so, it's, it's just getting crazy. Yeah, so, Everybody's doing so, it. So. I trained with Eric Colson for years. He was my, my number one coach. His yeah. whole game at one time was leg locks. Yeah. So he did. So we worked leg locks, how to shut it down, how to move it. So, but, but over the last um, over the last year, year and a half, because the the no gi game, people can do more in their, their movements that they've opened up and just said, well, instead of attacking from the hip ups, why don't we just attack from the hips down? Yeah. yeah. So it's just opened a whole whole catalyst of, yeah. Of movements, which is, and but also brings in some smashing injuries as well when people put the yoga on <laughs> and they don't realise they're popping their guys' knee. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, but that's just, and but people are now are away and they tap a lot quicker yeah. than they did before. Mm-hmm. Whereas years ago they were just holding on for a grim death. Yeah. And then wondered why they couldn't walk when they stood up. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, no. you notice that. I mean, some of these, some of these heel hooks or, or foot walks, ankle walks, or whatever, you. You don't feel it. Do you know what I mean? No, you Someone... don't. You don't feel the heel hook. See if yeah. somebody puts a heel hook on you, it's really nice and crisp and clean. Yeah. You don't feel it. The knee pops before, because it's on the ligament and the structures in the knee, the knee goes before anything else. Yeah. So it's only until such a time that the rotation's been put into the into the knee 
and it's too late by that point. You got you just and then the other guys, you know, he's up plumping and that's him wrecked for yeah. six to eight weeks if he hasn't torn any of the cartilage in his knee if he's lucky. Yeah. Then it's you know, I mean it's, it's it is good and it's an aspect of of martial arts that that's good. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. when you've got somebody at a lower level that doesn't know how to apply it controlled and it's not so good. Yeah. So yeah. that's the only issue. You just have to. They don't. They once they like we like white belt jiu-jitsu. You just two people are just <laughs> grabbing people and yeah. tying them out as much as they can. Yeah. But the yeah. problem with that is when they apply that into a technique that there's no control over, somebody yeah. gets injured. Yeah. And as I say to the guys, I do give them a ball. Come down again. I say, look, everyone needs to go to work the next day. Mm-hmm. So don't be. You, if you're competing and do things, then you can do stuff, but. Don't be hammering things into somebody else because we all need to go yeah. to our work tomorrow and yeah. uh, and be able to do that and that's our number one, you know, finance things that keeps us. I don't think for one minute ripping somebody's knee off is quite a clever thing to do. Yeah, it's, yeah. I just so, it's part yeah. of the game, certainly for competitions and stuff like that. It's, it's definitely part of the game, but yeah, the, yeah, what, no, it's what just releases you say. So um, obviously get the submission on, release it. And yeah, and it just need control. to be. I mean, you've got to show somebody a wee bit of respect. That's the thing. You have to have control, and, yeah. and that's that's the thing about the sport. Accidents do happen sometimes. You can go fall, twist, and accidentally get into a position mm-hmm. You, mm-hmm. you don't know, especially the way people's legs can go. Now you're just going into things. You think, God, corkscrewing and going what? And yeah. uh, and yeah. it's you can fall into positions, and it's an accident. But you, yeah, you, but if you know you're deliberately doing the damage to something, that's not that's yeah. not very good. Yeah. I mean, the people kind of notice that anyway. That's where I've seen a lot of places I've trained. I've never had a bad experience. Um, I've been fortunate enough to, I'd say, train in the States as well. And, yeah, never yeah. Ha- never ever had a bad experience. Um, I think you were in there. Did you not go? Where did you go? You went to Robert Drysdale's? Yeah, I mean, I was yeah, over. Yeah, I, and went, I was in Vegas. I went trained in there. Yeah, Drysdale's was I, good. I mean, I went in, it was after... Uh, We'd went to the Worlds, or I'd went yeah. to the Worlds, um, and I'd went and trained in California first at the GB headquarters, um, uh, which for a week with Dracula, we know and all that, which was an absolutely fantastic experience. Went to the Worlds, um, and then after the Worlds, decided, well, where am I going to go and train? And at, at that time, there wasn't many places that you were able to train in, in La- and I don't know why, but Las Vegas, they only had a few places you were able to go and actually train. Everywhere yeah. else was a UFC fighter's own personal gym. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because it was obviously, like, when I was over there, I was thinking, well, I would have liked to maybe go and, and train with Frank Mir. But at yeah. that time, Frank Mir had his own gym, and it was private. So you couldn't get into these gyms. So I saw Drysdale's, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go there. Um, and I went, and I remember going in, and Robert Drysdale's, when I went in, he was, we started the class, so everybody was lined up, and he basically gave a speech. Now, Robert Drysdale is one of these, obviously trained in Brazil, so he's got a very, very kind of tough nature, no way of thinking about stuff. So his, uh, he gave his guys a dressing down because of the, the worlds, and he was basically saying, look, some of you guys did well, some of you guys shouldn't have even been there at all. Um, and even his training, I mean, the class he did, his training was hard as well. Um, but again, he's one of the, the, the guys training down in Brazil. It was always hard. So, had the experience with him. I mean, I was there, I think I went training three times, three nights, and absolutely loved it. Um, no, it's good to all welcome in club. That's what Jiu-Jitsu does. It opens up yeah, yeah. places to go and train. Yeah, yeah. I was in there training in Vegas there when I was over. Yeah. It was good. I enjoyed it. Coming. It's a bit out of the way, It was a bit out of the way. Uh, yeah, you have to get a taxi out, and when you walk into Wee Scout, but I got a, an Uber out, yeah. and the woman wouldn't let me out of the car because she said, are you sure there's a club here? I said, oh, I said, it's in here somewhere, and then there was a door in the corner, yeah, yeah, just down the wee bit, and she was in the main road, she goes, I'll wait here until you, until you get in safe. I said, look, I'll be fine, and I walked in and met Robert Drysdale's wife, it was yeah, there, and, yeah. and uh, it was fine, no, it was good, 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 good opportunity to... To train in an in an ice club. Yeah. I, mean, I, I trained every even in Germany in Cyprus. There's a club in Cyprus. I'm still in touch with the guy on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's maybe he's black. Yeah, but he was. Uh, so so I, I was. He's in Paphos. Mm-hmm. And this is. I'm just telling you a story because it was years ago. So I was probably a purple belt at the time, and the guy was a blue. And he, now the guy was. Um, 
from one of the black belts that I can't remember was, there was a Brazilian guy who stayed in the God miles away and he drove once he found out that I had flown over mm. contacted this guy he came and trained with us yeah. and I've been there uh, friendly with a guy and that's been 10 years and yeah. I think he's I think the, the blue belt's now going to get his black I think this year mm-hmm. but just like that all over the world so what we had in this country was happening in, yeah. in other countries but yeah. no, it's, it's good it's great to see it developing and growing yeah so it's good to you know, and having this conversation now. And in our five years, have been a handful of you know, well, and a bunch of black belts. You know, yeah. so it's just going to develop and develop and grow and grow. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, by that time, I'll be retired. Yeah. So. <laughs> or, or you'll or still be on the mat. One or the other. Yeah, listen, you'll still be on the mat. I'm sure one way or another. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll be lying in the mat, get pulled <laughs> along probably. And then, obviously, for you then. Um, for you personally, so obviously everybody's got their goals. I mean, you're obviously the goal. One of your goals would have been got your black belt. So you've done that. So what what do you see next for yourself in regards to maybe jujitsu or martial arts or anything like that? Uh, what I want to do. So, so I treat it as a hobby and, and something that keeps me fit. Mm-hmm. Um, I would probably want to do more of it if I could. Yeah. And if I got fit enough, potentially compete. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I think so, and just and just try and help other people. Do you know, if I can help other people get to their goals and doing things, mm-hmm. I think that's probably more of a more of an achievement. I mean, what I've achieved, where I've got to, where in my life today, yeah, is almost remarkable within itself. So if I can try and help other people during that, then that, I think that's the most important thing. I don't uh, if I have any goals to do for myself. I just if I can just keep training, and yeah. doing things and doing stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, if I could maybe get Joe not to speak me, that would be quite good. <laughs> that would be quite a good, quite a good goal. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I know just help everybody else to try and you know achieve theirs. I think is the in that aspect is yeah. to try and pass on, you know, and just and that's a, and that's I think I think I don't think people appreciate and this might sound a bit. I don't think people appreciate what the people that have. The majority of belts around their waist at the moment will have had to do yeah. in the last maybe ten years to get to where they are. Yeah. That's the only thing I was about. A black belt has had to put the work in. Yeah. It's unlike any other martial art that people probably don't appreciate. And the the old school, um, like the boys in Glasgow, mm-hmm. up at the grip, uh, John Nick, myself. I mean. And, and look at Rick Young in Edinburgh, yeah. um, for example, is a prime example of what he's he's achieved. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. do you know what I mean? And the level that these people are so, but they're passing on and they're getting really, really good students. I think I think if they could understand maybe where these old guys came from rolling in the mat mm-hmm. for a couple of minutes instead of nice halls and nice 40 mil yeah. mats and yeah. stuff that goes over the top of them that you can actually clean yeah. instead of doing it with your face on a Saturday uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. then I think that's I think that's things. but no I don't I don't have any major aspirations and goals I just plod on I'm yeah. quite easy going and, and laid back so if I can just maintain that mm-hmm. and I've got one of my goals would have probably been in to being inside of the cage in the UFC yeah. or being in it would have been smashing but I'm too older for that but, and yeah. I had that opportunity with, with Paul and Brian and that was absolutely brilliant Yeah, uh, that was a great so if I could do something like that do, if I had the opportunity to do that something like that again or do something similar yeah. um, it would be really good but apart from that no I just uh, live life and take it easy as I can without stressing myself would be, yeah. would be really good yeah and then what would you yeah. say I mean obviously you I'd say you've been around certainly Scottish Jiu Jitsu from I see you were you guys were one of the first few people. So, what about the progression Jiu Jitsu from obviously when you were around at the start, or even when you started joining up with Marcus to what it is now? Um, As in the style of it or the growth of it? Just yeah, probably both. I mean the style, the growth. Um, I mean the style's totally changed. So when we were so our our Jiu Jitsu going back, and I so. Because there probably only was about maybe 12 or 15 going back years ago that actually were really doing it, grappling and doing things. And, and But it was like grappling, it was like, it was like man coiling. It was yeah. man coiling with punching and kicking and kneeing. There wasn't <laughs> any structure. So the thing that I would say that has developed mostly, more so probably over the last five years that I learned, is the, the structure of 
of development of um, of clubs and how they implement their their styles yeah. and their techniques. Mm-hmm. Um, and every couple of years, you'll see it. So, three years ago, you wouldn't have said that a massive leg lock game was going to be the way forward. It would have been something else yeah. controlling doing. But you see that coming, and then what you'll see in five years' time is something else coming. It's it's yeah. it's and that's that. Now it's going probably maybe away away from the gi at the moment and more into no gi yeah. but, um, because of of probably more freedom of movement mm-hmm. but I think it will come back into gi because if the tradition sits that you technically need to be graded to as such with a gi on which yeah. they like you to do mm-hmm. um, then I think people will revert back to the, the gi yeah. Yeah. But, um, but the standard is completely different I mean, you, see, you see what white belts are doing but I look at it and think, oh my god, I wouldn't have thought of doing that. So you just, uh, yeah, the standards changing and it's and it's growing and it's brilliant. And it's providing that everybody stays with their heads pretty well, sitting on their shoulders, not up their own ass. Then I think everyone will be smashing. Yeah, yeah. But so I think that's good. You're always, you know, it's, that, that's the main thing because as as I say, you know. It, nobody's the best at anything there's always somebody better mm-hmm. and you can't be the best you know people that say I'm the best at this I'm the best at that yeah. you're actually not yeah. you're either your perception of being the best or, or you're just competing against people that are at the level that you're comfortable at mm-hmm. um, because people only unless you're Hodger Gracie only for a period of time then things change but yeah. at the level we are at you, know, you could be the best athlete but not the best coach Yeah, you could be an, you can be the best coach but when you go to compete, you're not generally the best. So mm-hmm. um, they have to remember that that knowledge and information would have came from other people who have imparted that to get them to where they are. And I think that's quite important. Yeah, yeah. So if everybody's ego stayed on a level plane, then the life that we have would be far easier. Yeah, definitely. So it would be. So, I mean, so that's, that's probably the, my final thing, and that's probably the most important thing. Yeah, and then... Uh... The last question, I asked this to everybody, everybody um, that asked it, usually they say, oh, listen. Is that a marriage like question it? you're asking? No, me, no, 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 listen, I'm no, no. I'm no, no the day, no the day, are they? <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait till we get a wee cuddle, then I'll ask you. Yeah, 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 man coiling, fight the man coiling. <laughs> no, no, but if it wasn't for jujitsu, right, or even martial arts, um, what would we see Andy Callahan doing? Uh, God, now there's a question. So I would probably, be, if I wasn't for martial arts, I, would, I don't know if I would be willing to answer that question because the perception of people would have me would be completely different. <laughs> um, because if I wasn't for martial arts coming to when it did in the life at the time that I was that I had it, yeah, I would have went down a different road than I'm currently on just now. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I think it was a. Uh, saving grace for me at the time that I needed it to take me, place my energies in a different direction that it needed to be at the time that I got them. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for martial arts. I probably wouldn't be successful in physio mm-hmm. and in sport as what I am because it gives you a bit of discipline. But equally, the most important thing I've probably learned through martial arts is that you think you're really smashing and tough and hard and brilliant mm-hmm. and then Somebody at five foot one comes along and turns you upside down, pulls your ass inside it. Yeah, yeah. So, and then you go away and go, oh, that wasn't very good. Uh-huh. Uh, and then that gives you a humbling experience and then you come back down to earth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, and that, that teaches a good ethos in life that you can, you can apply what you can learn as best as you can in the times that you have it and then go through. But yeah, mm-hmm. um, it's been a major, I mean, martial, I've been doing martial arts since I've been different types since I've been 14, 15 year old. Yeah. And it's been something I've done throughout my life continuously until this day. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's been Thai boxing, MMA, judo, grappling, jiu-jitsu, or, or whatever, I've been doing it at least every week. Mm-hmm. And it's a major part of, of So yeah. I would probably say, I would maybe have, I'd be doing something different, but it helps me in all my aspects. It helps me in my physio, mm-hmm. it helps me in my day-to-day basis, and it helps me keep fit. Yeah. And, uh, and and it keeps me nice and chilled. So does nice. that answer that question? Yeah, yeah, listen, that was fantastic. <laughs> so, good, good. Um, and then for you, 
obviously the last thing for me then is classes. So what classes, yeah. what days are you guys open down at Callahan's? So we do a Tuesday and a Thursday night, and I have to remember, it's from 8 o'clock till half nine. Mm -hmm. So it starts at 8 and it's half nine. Yeah. It finishes, it never finishes in time and it never starts in time. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, Jack does a Monday, he's doing a Monday foot tickling course mm -hmm. uh, randomly sometimes on a Monday. But I'd love to be able to tell you when that is, but I can't because yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But you can um, catch that, you can see that on the. the you can see that on the yeah. Callahan's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu page, which has also been developed within the last year. Yeah. So, and obviously I didn't do that either. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so yeah, I've done not too bad. I've got a website, well, I haven't got a website, I've got a Facebook page, I've got a logo, and I've got a team, yeah. and I've done absolutely nothing at all apart from <laughs> turn up on a Tuesday and a Thursday night to do that. So it's been great, yeah, yeah. That's so, the good thing. I mean, that's the good thing about Jiu Jitsu. I mean, with, in the gym, you can go in, you've got plumbers, you've got, yeah. you've got somebody bricklayers, you've got yeah, a mechanic. Just, do you know what I mean? So we don't pay for anything in jiu jitsu. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, we've got a guy. We've got a guy with a PhD. Right. right. But he does. But he doesn't turn up for training. Right. Uh, but he still associates with the club. I can't remember his name. Murphy something. Yeah. I said no. It's not. That's right. So. <laughs> uh, apparently, but you would know he did a PhD because you could never ask him because he's never there. Yeah. But he's probably doing something else. <laughs> so if you ever see that guy, John, just say, uh, Andy Callahan was asking for you. Just, yeah. uh, just, uh, just." Uh, I'll Google map him. Back. Yeah, let's not Google map him back down there. <laughs> Google map him back down there. That would be smashed. So, listen, Andy, thanks very much. Magic, no worries. Oh, right, you know. take it easy, and I'll see you in a journey somewhere. All see right. You, sir. you have a right, good day. Thanks, okay. so thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Bye bye. bye, -bye. So, guys, that was Andy Callahan. Um, absolute fantastic guy to speak to. Um, Andy, as I said, uh, just hearing his kind of aspect on obviously training and from his physio point of view as well I mean as I say for me I've not really heard um, or I've never thought about it like that um, obviously using that kind of thing obviously the, the anatomy and just uh, being able to add on locks and stuff like that um, just obviously through the job that he does uh, being a physio so um, it's definitely interesting to hear about that um, anybody that's down in air um, or Obviously, if you're down on holiday or visiting the beach or whatever, I mean, take a gee, give the guys at Callahan's a shout. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you'll get some good roles down there. They've got some really, really good people down there. Um, again, from white belts up. Um, and uh, a good, solid base of guys down there. And, again, got a fantastic professor in Andy Callahan um, who is there to kind of bring them along. And as you heard about a couple of them, I mean... Um, they're doing absolutely fantastic down there so um, obviously being a physio as well physio for Paul Craig in the UFC or a grappling partner um, for Paul Craig um, and again getting the chance to go away to a UFC event being ringside for Paul Craig's fight um, again is obviously an experience uh, definitely an experience for Andy it would be an experience for anybody so, um, so listen Andy thank you again for obviously taking the time to speak to me um, so guys, we've obviously got a few people lined up, um, I think tomorrow we're going to catch up with uh, Hugh McCartney, um, again, another Marcus Nardini guy, um, again, the Marcus Nardini guys, when they come on, they've always got good stories to tell, obviously from Joke, even Damien, Andy Baker, Andy Callahan, and then obviously we're we're looking forward to hearing more from Hugh McCartney tomorrow. Um, so listen, guys, thanks very much for listening, and we'll see you on the next one.